So that's, that's just investing in financing activities. Any questions so far? Okay, let's keep going. So now, now that we've recapped, that all should have been information in your financial accounting course. And we went just a little more detail with how investing and financing activities can be a little tricky. If you were in my financial accounting course previously, I probably, I, I, I definitely hammered that home. And so you should be pretty comfortable with everything previously. So just making sure we build on that. So how can we use this now as a managerial accountant, as a manager? Uh, managers are going to review this to make business decisions, to build budgets, and to make sure we have enough cash to pay our debtors and make sure our investors are happy before buying and selling stock. And so a good example, right, is we need to make sure that we're going to have enough cash to pay our, in, our creditors. If we don't have enough cash to pay our creditors, I've seen companies where you get in trouble, where you know that in the next 10 years, you're going to make millions and millions of dollars. But in the next year, you're not going to be able to pay your short-term debt. So if you don't restructure that short-term debt, you're going to be in trouble and creditors can demand bankruptcy or demand restructuring. So this is where a manager with a critical thinking cap has to figure out how to alter the cash flows to make sure that you stay liquid for your immediate creditors. I've also seen managers not use cash effectively. They look at their statement of cash flows and they, they're not a, a analytic, analytical and they might have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in a cash balance that they, in, a, in a savings account that's not collecting interest. So we want to make sure that we're able to assess all of these and compare different divisions and compare different opportunities. And that's where we are as a managerial accountant. So we'll review cash flows for business decisions. Um, and so example here is we might have these three different product groups or three different divisions and compare them ba based on statement of cash flows. And this is what real companies do. We'll look at all of our different divisions and say, Okay, our BMX division um, had 90,000 from operating activities, 48,000 from buying assets, and 27,000 from repaying debt, 15,000 net increase in cash. Our ATV division had 40,000 in cash from activities, 25,000 purchasing assets, and 15,000 increase in cash. And then Trex had a loss in operating activities, sold assets, and issued debt. All of these at the end of the day had $15,000 in cash. So if we didn't understand statement of cash flows, all of these, and, and potentially the same income and expense, right? Potentially based on revenue standards and expense standards, maybe they have the same income statement, let's assume. So if we only look at the increase in cash or the final cash flow, we might say, hey, all these are equal investments. But now the statement of cash flows, what company looks the best? Here, what's your A company or what's your A product line? What would you invest in? BMX, ATV, or Trex? Write in the chat. BMX, and why would we invest in BMX? What's, why is that an A company, the best company? Why is it? So, I mean, you might say that it has income, but that's not necessarily true. We have cash flows from operating activities. That's cash flow. This isn't showing our income. It's related to income, but this is showing operating cash flows from operating activities. What's another reason you might want to invest more in BMX? I want you to all think critically right here. Come on, come on with me. Yeah, they're using some of their cash to pay off their debt. That's, that's, if the debt's a high interest debt, that could be a good thing. Also, from we looked at net present value, right, in the last class. Maybe repaying debt isn't a good thing if we have better ROI opportunities. So if our debt's at 2 or 3% and we can buy, uh, and we can invest in our company and make a 10% return, it's actually okay to have debt. But let's say it's still, they're using some of it to repay debt, which is kind of an investment in themselves, right? So that's a good, good it, it could be good for the long run. Yeah, and I like, uh, uh, we can also think of investment, right? This company, this division is investing. So even though we have less cash at the end, I know that their operating activities are solid. 
and they're buying new assets, right? They're, they're growing. So I, I'd expect their operations to be even better. They're, they're building their business. Like, wow, how much can you tell from a statement of cash flows? Just this little piece, I can already get a much better picture of these different divisions. Now, which one's the worst here? BMX, ATV, or Trex? We know BMX is the best. Which one's the worst? Yep, Trex. Right? Why Trex? Why? They, even though they have the same cash at the end, we're seeing that they're most of their cash they got from selling their assets. That means they're going to make less operations in the future, right? We also know that they had to issue debt in order to stay afloat. So I would, out of all three of these divisions, I'd be concerned more with this division. So as a manager, I'd say, hey, can we give more money to BMX? Can we allocate more to BMX, right? Uh, yeah, also concern is why are they losing money from operating activities? Now, if there's a loss from operating activities, but we see that they're purchasing a bunch of plant assets and getting a bunch of investment, that might mean, okay, they're in early stages of developing a new product, that's okay. Um, but if we're seeing that, hey, we're selling off assets, we're paying off debt, and we have no operating activities, I'd say, well, they're probably in trouble, right? So you can, this can help us determine, and then as a manager, maybe we want trucks to succeed, and we can go to these, the trucks division and say, hey, what's going on here? Do you, why aren't you investing more? What, what went wrong? And we can dig into it. And ATV is in the middle. So just there's so many ways we can dig into this information and learn more uh, about why a company is doing well or not. So one way that we can assess this is, uh, and memorize this ratio, is cash flow over total assets. So we can determine operating cash flow aver over average total assets to determine uh, how the company's doing it, generating cash flow with its, the assets it, it uh, invests in. So if we have a million dollars in assets and $100,000 in operating cash flow, we're having a 10% kind of return on cash flow on total investments. So memorize that metric. The spread sheet preparation, if anyone wants to go over how to do this, I can do this in the second half of class. Uh, again, I because of the election, I will allow everyone to miss this piece though, if they want to, it won't be tested. And you will be learning this in real life. It is a useful piece, but uh, for now it, it would take, it does take about an hour and a half to do uh, minimum to understand this. So we can go over that future or maybe in one of the extra classes if you'd like to go over it. compute cash flows from operating activities using the direct method. And so this is just a little more detail on how we can uh, to calculate operating activities using this direct method. And so the idea here, we went over this in a lot of detail previously, but we would really go through and look at our actual cash receipts and our cash payments in our bank statement. So I'll actually go to a company and if you have a QuickBooks account, I've had this for some clients, I'll say, hey, upload all your bank statements. And I'll go through and check, say, okay, that was a payment for, was this payment for operating or, uh, or what kind of operating activity? Was it customers? Was it renters? Was it interest, et cetera? Was it a, a cash payment for a supplier? Um, and then I'll go through and mark each one of these to determine uh, the what the expense was, similar to how we do financing and investing activities, right? We'll go through each single transaction and investigate, well, why did we spend money? What was it related to? And so the idea here is receipts from sales, sales revenue, uh, uh, from an indirect method, or I give direct, this is direct, but the idea is if we collect money from an cash receive, accounts receivable, we would decrease our accounts receivable because we got cash, right? So if we, if we collect money, from, if our receipts are from sales, um, and we would add it to our balance if we decrease our accounts receivable and vice versa. And you can go through this. This is just a refresh of Accounting 101. And that's the end of Chapter 12. So I know that was quick, but I think that really covers the key concepts today.